I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 27th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. And today, we're starting the day at Laguna de Apoyo in Masaya here in Nicaragua, where we're going to be heading to Mazatepe to do some furniture shopping. Get to it right after the bump. Laguna de Apoyo is one of the most beautiful places in the country and really anywhere in the world. It is so gorgeous. We're here at the Hotel Paradiso where we filmed a couple episodes back in 2021. It is where we did the This is Nicaragua first episode on Laguna de Apoyo. We filmed a lot of that while staying here. Uh, it is also the place where we first ran into Camille, who has been on the show recently. Uh, we, she was here staying and we just happened to meet her here and then uh, life events became interesting. But uh, this is where we are staying today. We came out last night, uh, went and did some walking around in Granada, which I have to say, Having lived in Granada a number of years ago and having visited last year, I visit on a regular basis, but it's been a several months since I visited. They have done so much amazing work on the, the city, especially uh, near the waterfront. The Malecon is completely revamped. The city park along the waterfront is all new. They have lights, all the area that famously was very dark and dangerous at night south of the, um, uh, the Calzada that has all which is the pedestrian way that walks through the city from the cathedral heading to the waterfront that is now these beautiful like urban designed lights like really neat urban design beautiful to walk down now it's really well lit the center part that was just the middle of a road is now a beautiful park they have the most gorgeous fountain with beautiful lights at night like it looks great in the day and at night uh, the old port and port of entry into granada uh, at the waterfront now i knew about this but i hadn't been there yet uh, which used to just be an empty building for, I don't know, a decade. Uh, that's where the ferry used to be the ferry terminal. Now it has a bar and restaurant at the top with views of the lake and the views of the new park. Absolutely fantastic. And the waterfront park, they've done the same thing. They've taken all those lights and they just turn the corner and go along the water park for quite some ways. And so they've taken an area that was dangerous and had potential, but nothing was there and turned it into a really, really beautiful walking way. And there's so much potential now for new businesses and new ventures and, and activities to go in and use that space. Um, I really hope that, that some things come of that. And because Granada is the primary tourist location for the country, it's really important that a lot of people get out there and, uh, and experience it. And it's important that it be a place, I'm gonna be a little bit in the shadows just because it's so great to show the lake in the back of like, why be here and not show it off? Um, it's, it's just so great that they're doing that and I hope that a lot of people have a chance to experience it. Um, uh, it really is, I'm just so, I'm so impressed. Having lived there, those things were such a problem uh, and we always talked about it when we were in Granada. It's like, oh well, it's, it's great except, you know, this waterfront is beautiful but it's dangerous at night, but the park doesn't have anything in it, but, 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 and now uh, it's fantastic. So we had a really good time going and checking that out, walking around. My friend who makes uh, the bracelets and stuff, this is funny, I'm gonna show I have a new bracelet from him. Um, <clears throat> we first met him in 2015. Dominic and I went to the Calzada, brought the kids, and we did uh, dinner one time. This is eight years ago. And this guy came up and he sells bracelets and anklets and, and necklaces and those kinds of things on the street, which is a very common thing. They're, they're standard, he doesn't make them. Uh, they're standard uh, uh, souvenir things that they sell in all the towns here. Who knows where they're made? Uh, so, but, so he sells them, lots of people do, but he's deaf and uh, we got them for the kids back then and they wanted special things and so he custom, you know, put them together and spent some time with us and, and really remembered us. When I returned in 2019 with Alan and Anna and Rachel, I ran into him on the streets of Granada and of course we remembered each other and we got a picture together uh, and then in 2020, Two, uh, I was here with Brian and we ran into him again. And every time I start being like, you know, I always run into this guy. And so I was telling uh, Sean and Cindy and Marcella when we were here that I'm like, oh, we're gonna, I, I always run into this guy. And Sean's like, I hope we run into him. And we did, we were sitting having a drink and he came into the place and he's like, ah, and he came and talked to us. And, and so I have, so literally every time I come to Granada and go to the Calzada, I run into him over a period of eight years, which is kind of crazy. 
So we came here because we're going furniture shopping in Masatepe. We came and stayed at the beautiful Laguna de Apoyo because it is nearby and any excuse to come to the lake uh, is a pretty good one. Uh, so nice to stay at the Hotel Paradiso, very relaxing, not great internet here. I had to scramble to get some uploads done for you guys. Uh, so we're gonna leave here and we're gonna go furniture shopping. Uh, I've never done furniture shopping here. Uh, Dominica has done quite a bit, knows places. We have furniture from here, but I'm always working and never have a chance to do it. But she is in Laos right now. As I'm recording this, she's doing a river cruise through Laos and uh, really enjoying that, but has nothing to do so very very uh relaxing because it's just a boat down the river so i'm taking everyone furniture shopping so this is going to be a bit of an adventure today uh, I do want to note, just as a channel thing, I have a few people who are constantly telling me, and today specifically I have more people saying, that yesterday's show, the 26th, uh, they really love the bump on the show. And then I've had a couple people, not as many, but uh, more than one, who have said that they don't like the bump or that they are indifferent and, and it could go, but it's, they feel it's kind of wasting time. Um, but I had these comments one right after another. I hope I'm able to screenshot them, that they're in a position where I can screenshot them together and show that it's one right after another, saying that I, they really like the bump or I need to dump the bump all at the same time. And it's like, there's, there's just no way I can keep everyone happy. Um, my plan is, for those who don't like it, I'm sorry, but I plan to keep the, the bump because I really enjoy, one, that I have a standard format that gets the show going. Um, it helps me kind of just, market. It, 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 it makes my workflow actually a slightly easier, even though it does take a little bit longer. Uh, but I like being able to pick out the music and having a little bit different tune every day. That's just fun. Uh, and it kind of gives me an excuse to have a lot of music services because I use multiple music services to do that which is very expensive, but I need an excuse for having them. Um, and honestly, it does make the video just that extra 15 seconds longer, which is a big thing for YouTube. Um, it, it helps make the show uh, work. So uh, it, right now, as long as the, the majority of people I get are, wow, I really like the bump, or it's a good one today, or I enjoy having the bump, whatever, um, it's, Ah, it's tough. I can't please everyone. I'm sorry. I don't try to ignore people and it's just, it's hard to adapt. Some people prefer longer shows, some prefer shorter, some pr like me talking, some like me showing. Like everyone has a different thing and I try not to change the show too much because you guys are here because you like what we're doing, but I also do try to tweak when I can for what you guys are looking for. So leave your comments, let me know, but uh, let's head on off to Masatepe. I think it's going to be pretty cool. This is the parking lot of the Hotel Paradiso and we're heading out of Laguna de Apoyo. I wanted to bring a little bit of this trip to you guys because I know a lot of you don't watch our sister channel Drive Warp. If you find this interesting, be sure to go over there and subscribe because this type of content is available over there. Not really narration, just music and driving different places, but I think this is really cool to watch. But I really wanted to put this one here on the channel because Laguna de Apoyo is so special. We're driving out of a volcanic crater. This is us climbing the interior wall of the volcanic crater. We were down at the water level, obviously, because that's where the hotel is. We have to climb to the top of the ridge, go over the ridge, and then down to the villages that we're going to go shopping at. So this is really cool. This is very important for this region and completely unique. You're not going to find anything like this without really, really going far afield. So a special thing to experience. And this is one of the reasons you come to Apoyo is because you get to come inside this volcanic crater. And it's worth noting, everything on the inside of the crater is a protected reserve. So you pay, I'm not sure how much it is, but it's like a dollar or two uh, to drive in. I think you can walk in for free. You pay a very small amount for your car to come in and that helps to support the reserve. And it's the uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, Mensa, that you pay. And this is their checkpoint right here. We're just going to show it. And uh, we have to pay everything to leave, but we had paid to go in the night, be night before. This is the drive down the outside of the volcano. So now we're heading down the flank. There's quite a bit of population on the outside. On the inside, it is extremely hard, and I believe I've heard that you can no longer build inside. You can repair houses that exist, you can expand houses that exist, but you can't build new ones. So it's a hot, all of this area, even on the outside flank, highly desirable land, but you have regular villages out here on the outside. On the inside, the land is outrageously expensive and impossible to get. So everything in there very, very sought after. And if you're getting anywhere close to having your own beach, you're one of just a handful of businesses in the country that are able to get beachfront on the lake. So extremely sought after. Uh, Hotel Paradiso is uh, very unique in having that um, 
uh, Casa Marimba, another example. They have beautiful beaches in there. So this is a really cool drive. It is a little bit annoying. It's hard to tell from the video. This is kind of a tough drive. All the traffic makes for extremely tight streets. Oh, that was perfect timing. And then you come out on the highway, and this is a beautiful new highway that they just put in. I've only gotten to drive this a couple times, uh, and the last time I was at Apoyo, they didn't have this. So this makes the entire journey through Apoyo and all the outer Messiah areas just so much more accessible. This is us going through the first of the Pueblos Blancos, and we're heading into that region. So every little thing we come past here is a little village where they're doing crafts and different things. So this part, absolutely easy as can be, super easy drive, simple, uh, straightforward. You're not gonna get lost, but going into the crater, that's some you know hard driving. Uh, we're coming, gonna come through the village where Sandino himself was born right there. Uh, hard to see it fly by. And we're coming into Massatepe then where we're gonna go do some furniture shopping with Sean and Cindy as they look to furnish their home in Las Panitas. All right, we made it out to Massatepe. That's pretty loud on the road and they're playing music across the street. So I'm gonna do my best to knock that out. But this is the village of furniture. Massatepe is famous. It's one of the Pueblos Blancos or white villages, uh, also known as the witch villages in Messiah. It is seriously loud. They've got a ferretaria, a hardware store, just blasting music this direction. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can walk another way. But we're here at Muebles Lilium. Now these are, Muebles is a furniture store, and in the case here, these are furniture factories. So they're actually making all their own furniture and selling it right here on the spot. So it's, uh, it's a different experience than you can get in the United States where you're just seeing a showroom in most cases. This is uh, maybe 50 factories and showrooms here in Massatepe. This is the one that we really like. Uh, we've had good experiences there and we bought a lot of furniture here. Uh, and so I'm gonna walk over and hang out with this dog who is being quiet, unlike everyone else. Hello! And this is a this is a cute little place right here. We have to check that place out. And uh, so everyone in Nicaragua comes here for furniture shopping. That is what you do. It's a big part of the Nicaragua experience. If you're coming to see uh, uh, just how people live, if you're coming to do uh, shopping for something really meaningful to send home, or if you live here and you want furniture, you're probably going to come to Massatepe. There are a few other places that you can do some decent shopping, such as in Messiah itself. But if you go to Messiah, you're tending to get showrooms and Massatepe is where the factories are. There are many generations of family artisans here who make handmade furniture and that knowledge and experience and everything gets passed on generation to generation. Uh, our uh, store here, Muebles Lilium, she is part of a furniture making family. Her mother had a furniture factory. She taught her and her sister how to make furniture. They've been making furniture like this their entire lives. Each of them has their own factory here in town now. Uh, and because of the way it works, if you wanted to be an artisan here in Nicaragua in furniture, you would effectively need to move to Massatepe in order to then get people to come to you because people will always look for Massatepe because that is where the artisans are. So it's not that you would have to be born into, like that would help obviously, but you don't have to be born into it. But if you want to operate a store, it makes sense to operate it here because the supply chain, the, the customers, everything is already coming here. It's not such a big country that everyone can't just drive to Massatepe to do their, their furniture shopping. So everyone does. So you can just drive down the street and it's shop after shop after shop and you can see all these places, one right after another, and look at many different options, styles, and makers, and prices all very quickly. It is so loud out here, it's absolutely ridiculous, but it's really cool. And then there's other villages that sell other things, such as their entire villages that do pottery, for example, and ones that do plants, and just all kinds of things. And so it's a neat shopping experience, and it's a cool thing to do if you can get out and do it. While we're out driving to go look at furniture, we came through Monimbo, which has a big circle. It's just part of the highway. But I want to walk out and show how beautiful this highway is through the witch villages now. This is all very new. This is Messiah in this direction with the truck that's going to run me over. And then this heads towards the witch villages. And they're here in Monimbo. We're going to head down to Mazatepe and some other villages. But we stopped here to get some hammocks.
Hammocks are a very special thing in Nicaragua. They're part of everyday life. Everybody uses them. Everyone has them. Every house is full of them. And you can buy them anywhere in the country, but coming out here to the Witch Villages is one of the best places to get the highest quality and best prices and best selection. So a lot of people actually take the effort to come out here and go shopping instead of doing it in your local city. But a lot of gas stations, someone will walk up and sell you a hammock and the prices won't be terrible along some of the, the roads, uh, the roadsides they sell them, but out here is definitely the place to go. If you're gonna be in the area, if it's not a special trip, this is where you pick up a hammock. Part of the fun of shopping in Mazatepe or in any of these villages is you're driving down the road and you simply see stuff that you like and you stop as you're driving along the road. Uh, so there's a ton of places, they all sit directly you don't have to do anything, right? You just look out the windows, they have everything lined up against the sidewalk, and uh, you just pull over, see what you like, and you can just go from place to place. You can walk, you can drive, uh, you can see a lot of stuff really quickly, and that's why it's so popular to do this here, is everyone is in one town. So you can come do furniture shopping and spend the whole day in one town and see 20, 30 places with a lot of similar stuff, but each one is unique as well. They're all handmade. Uh, so you can really get variety all in one spot. It's a really cool experience. Furniture shopping really was a lot of fun. We had a good time and got to check out a number of stores and a bit of variety, and they managed to buy all the furniture that they needed for their house. It really was a successful trip and, uh, and an interesting look at Nicaragua. If you'd like to support the channel, remember to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. If you'd like to uh, reach out and get help with uh, potential moving relocation information about Nicaragua, hit us up at info at relocatenicaragua.com. As always, like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, share on social media, and I will see all of you tomorrow.